there's questions that people have when it comes to uh, water heaters in and of themselves. One of the uh, important aspects, one of the first aspects that you go to when you're uh, thinking about water heating in a house, new house, or even if you're replacing one in the house, is sometimes sizing the water heater. How do I determine what size water heater I need? Uh, one of the first steps you do, um, you go to being a plumber, is I go to first hour usage on something typically residential like this. We just go to first hour ratings. To pick that up, there's a lot of different tools you can do. First one, obviously, is you can get your uh, local plumber involved, your local service technician, and they can help you out if you have questions on it. But there's a lot of helpful sites uh, online um, that you can go to. Just type in your Google search bar, sizing your water heater, um, and there's different different calculators that you can use on that level. Keep in mind that uh, older houses have uh, older valves that typically use a lot more water than newer ones and most of your uh, sizers will indicate hey you, you need to think a little bit more water because uh, if it's pre-1992 the house uh, shower tub and shower valve will probably use up to 30 gallons or if it's a Roman tub it'll use up to 30 gallons per minute. So those calculations really can make a difference in what your water heater's first hour rating is. One of the things that I wanted to point out to you is the first hour rating is always on every single water heater. You'll always see a yellow tag that's called an energy guide. The energy guide has all kinds of information, uh, whether it's electric or gas, on how many therms it'll use, how many kilowatts it'll use, and kind of the average of what it's going to cost you per year. It also has a little number on it where it says capacity, first hour rating. That's where you design your water heater to. So then we come back to the actual going to the design of the system itself. Hypothetically, we're going to put kind of a design together to give you something to go by. You got a, uh, a shower that you've got one, one shower, which is typical past 1992 at 18 gallons per minute. So you put that in, say you take two showers every morning because there's two of you, and you've got two kids. One of the kids uses another bathroom, and let's say you've got a third bathroom for another kid. The next one is going to be 23 gallons straight across, so you've got 36 plus 23, and then you've got bath three at 11 and a half gallons. You kind of cut it into thirds on those levels past what you've got. Um, your um, Let's say you do the clothes washer in the morning, run a load of clothes, that's a 40 gallon usage and you always count that towards the hot side. Um, people might not use hot, but they may. It's one of those things that you just count it as part of the system as you do it. The other thing, let's say we're, uh, we, take, we do a shave. Everything that we do in addition to, I'm a guy, I shave every morning, so you, you shave your face as well. That adds another two gallons to it. Basically it takes a process of, I don't know, two to five minutes and you run about two and two and a half gallons out in that process time and we wash our hands because we fed the dog that morning so we come up with a total gallonage of 124.5 for our first hour recovery that's what we need to kind of point our design to because if that's a typical morning for us we need to make sure that our water heater can handle that this water heater in in that capacity wouldn't be the right size because it's got a first hour rating of 87 gallons what's that what that means is it'll do 87 gallons of hot water recovery in that first hour. Um, even though the tank itself is not an 87 gallon tank, it's only an, I believe this is an 80 here. This is, yes, an 80 gallon tank. It will do 87 gallons in that hour because we have stacked heat in here that's residual from it being completely good and warm up to our temperature. So it does a first hour rating of 87 gallons, which would be small for our system for what we're designing. We would probably, on an electric water heater, want to step to 120 gallon, and it would probably take up where we need to be because there's size ranges that you have to go to. You're only specific like to a 40 gallon, a 50 gallon, then it steps up. I think you can do a 66 gallon, then you do 80, then 120, and then they go commercial from there. But you size it to that first hour rating and that's how you come into it. Another thing people wonder about or worry about is um, sometimes at the furthest bathroom you don't get hot water real soon. You're letting it run and run and run and run and you're worried about water usage on top of it. You got five minutes before you get any hot water and you want to get in the shower or get things done. Um, there's a couple of things that you can do on that level. Um, the main one that I would recommend is probably doing a recirc line. 
What that is is tying uh, another. This is something that you'll most likely need a, a certified technician for as well. But this this will give you an idea of what you're going to have to do. You'll run another water line off of your hot water side over to the furthest point in your sink. And in that loop right here, you'll put a little pump that's got a little timer on it. Because if you get up at 5 and like to take your shower at 5, we'll make it come on at 4.15 and get that loop good and hot. That way when you come to your sink and turn it on, you got instant hot water. It's kind of like having a separate little tank up underneath your sink right there at that point. And that's another thing that we'll go to and kind of talk about because kitchens have that a lot. Now, um, in that process, it's, it's uh, you cutting into this line, you shut the water system on, you cut into this line, and you run a new loop all the way over. A lot of times it involves removing drywall and things like that. There are newer systems out there that you can ask your certified technician what, what, you know, what options you have that are, are not so home invasive, but they, they change things as far as you know, your cold water and inside of your bathroom and your comfort zones. Now, um, th since we're on the subject of uh, getting instant hot water, the, they do make little tanks that are one gallon called instant hot tanks that you can put underneath your kitchen sink. It involves putting another tap on your faucet. Um, they don't necessarily tie into your hot water system, but they do produce 190 degree water right there. 